Give me five minutes of your time and I'll share something about life, God and the Bible. As we read the story of the missionary journeys of Paul in the book of Acts, we sometimes wonder how Paul and his team can keep up with all the challenges that God puts in their path as they bring the good news of Jesus to people in the Mediterranean. God must have given Paul a message that he is directing Paul and his team, come what may. There is a sense of the call of God for Paul in all that he says and does. Therefore, as we read all the problems that Paul and his team encounter in Acts 17, they must believe that God is with them as they start the church in Thessalonica. God calls them to start that church despite the trials and the tribulations. Thessalonica is in the province of Macedonia. Earlier in Acts 16, a man of Macedonia appears to Paul in a vision. Here is what he says. So this is a little bit about Paul and his team. When they came to the border of Mysia, they tried to enter Bithynia, but the Spirit of Jesus would not allow them to. So they passed by Mysia and went down to Troas. During the night, Paul had a vision of a man of Macedonia standing and begging him, Come over to Macedonia and help us. After Paul had seen the vision, we got ready at once to leave for Macedonia, concluding that God had, had called us to preach the gospel, the good news, to them. Acts 16, 7-10 I believe that as Paul and his team encounter so many challenges in their missionary journeys, they have this understanding that God has called them to this mission of sharing the good news of Jesus Christ to both Jew and Greek. It is after this call from God that Paul proceeds to go to Philippi, Thessalonica, and Berea to share the good news of Jesus Christ in the province of Macedonia. Paul knows that as he goes to these cities, God is with him as God issues the call to him through the vision of the man from Macedonia. Here is a story from Jesse. She talks about following the voice of Jesus in her life. Jesus said, My sheep listen to my voice. I know them and they follow me. John 10 verse 27. Wood ducks built their nests in hollow rotted tree cavities, which are sometimes up to 60 feet above the ground. Within a day of hatching, the ducklings climb out of their nests. Following their mother's beckoning call, they leap from the safety and comfort of the nest and fall to the ground below before making their way to water where their mother awaits. The ducklings do not hesitate to follow the voice they know and trust. They make this jump before they have learned to fly, yet they trust the call to come. After discovering the fascinating beginnings of a wood duck's life, I began to wonder how much I trust in the voice of the one who cares for me. Am I willing to leave all that is safe and familiar to follow the shepherd's call, even if it means leaping into the great unknown? The duckling's obedience is natural and instinctive. They show no fear, only trust. What a strong reminder to focus on the shepherd's voice with full assurance of his loving guidance. Um, next Sunday, we will start our studies in the book of First Thessalonians. In Acts 17, we learn how God uses Paul, Silas, and Timothy to start that church in Thessalonica. God enables Paul to make an impact on both Jew and Greek in Thessalonica. God also protects Paul and his team from the violence and the persecution of the jealous Jews. At the end of 1 Thessalonians, Paul's first letter to the church in Thessalonica, there are verses about the faithfulness of God. 1 Thessalonians 5, 23-24 May God himself, the God of peace, sanctify you through and through, May your whole spirit, soul, and body be kept blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. The one who calls you is faithful, and he will do it. The God who calls us is faithful, and he will do it. The faithful God will protect us 
come what may. Amen.